A histogram and its corresponding ogive contain the same information in different forms. Anything the histogram might tell you about the shape of, an, of a distribution of quantitative data, ogive could also tell you the same things. That's because the slope of the ogive is directly related to the height of the bars in the histogram. In any class interval, the slope of the ogive varies directly with the height of the histogram. I'll show you that with a picture. Basically what happens is the ogive is steepest where the histogram is tallest. And because of that, um, anything that the histogram tells you about the shape of the distribution, the ogive can also tell you. Here is our example of the 29 heights of the AP STAT students. And you see that uh, this is a fairly symmetric distribution except for this one little observation over here, but the uh, um, the histogram is tallest in this interval right here between 68 and 71 inches. When we look at our ogive, we see something similar to that. The steepest part of the ogive is between 68 and 71 inches. That's where the histogram was tallest. Over here where the histogram had no observations at all, there was no bar on the histogram in that interval the ogive is flat. So in these intervals here, here, and here, the ogive is fairly flat, but is rising. And those were the intervals on the histogram where the bars were short. They were only one unit high. Same thing up there. And in the middle where the histogram was tallest, that's where the ogive is steepest. So you can basically work either way. You can work from the histogram to the ogive and figure out what the ogive look, look, looks like based on what the histogram looks like. Or you could work backwards from the ogive and figure out what the, what the corresponding histogram, histogram would look like. Here's where the tallest bar would be in this interval. You'd have shorter bars in those two intervals, but still somewhat tall. And then um, shorter bars still on, on the tails. And then right here in this interval, you wouldn't have any bar at all. All that information is contained in the ogive just as well as it's contained in the histogram. Now ogives have this extra nice feature that you can figure out the percentile that corresponds to a data value using an ogive. And uh, that's primarily what we use them for is they're useful for converting data values to percentiles and vice versa. We'll look at how that's done with uh, with an example, and uh, but here's the general basic procedure for that. If you want to find the percentile corresponding to a data value, find the data value on the horizontal axis of the ogive. From there, go straight up to the ogive, and then from that point on the ogive, go straight across to the percent axis, and that is where your percentile would be. So, for instance, in this picture right here, if you're looking for the um, the percentile that corresponds to a particular va data value, you can find that data value on this axis and then go up to the ogive and then go straight across and find your percentile. For instance, 65 inches, a height of 65 inches is right here on the horizontal axis. If we go up to the ogive, we'll hit it right here, go straight across to about here. That's going to be about 10 percent. That's going to be about the 10th percentile in our uh, distribution. If you uh, look at 71 inches, 71 inches go straight up to the ogive and then go straight across. And that's going to be about 72 percent. So the 72nd percentile roughly. Now those are approximate. This data set was fairly small and uh, it's a little bit uh, lumpy as small data sets tend to be. So these percentiles would only be approximate. Now the ogive and the histogram share this problem that stem plots and dot plots, for instance, do not have. In stem plots and dot plots, the data values are preserved in the picture. But with the histogram and the ogive, those data values are not. They're somewhat obscured by the picture. And uh, for instance, we can figure out from the ogive or for the percentile what the relative frequency or actual count of observations might be in a particular interval. But we can't say what exactly those data values in that interval might be. And uh, that's a, a weakness that histograms and ogives share. So you have to take this with a grain of salt. If you are calculating 
try to figure out a percentile from a data value, your percentiles are only going to be approximate. But basically what you do is, again, find the data value you're interested in, go up to the ogive, and then go across to the percentile you're looking for. So uh, um, 74 inches would be at about the 90th percentile on this uh, on this ogive. Um, you can also go backwards and the procedure for going backwards is basically like this. Um, if you want to find a data value corresponding to a percentile, find the percentile on the percent axis. From there, go straight across to the ogive and then from that point on the ogive, go straight down to the horizontal axis. There will be the data value you're interested in. For instance, say you want to find the, uh, the median of this distribution. Well, 50% is right about here. That's the 50th percentile. Corresponds to the median. Go straight across to the ogive. You'd hit it about here. And then go down. And you're going to be at about 69.5 inches. That would be the approximate median. Now, that is not the exact median in this data set. One of the data values itself is the median, because we have 29 observations. And all the data values are whole numbers. So that's not exact but it's close. Um, if you want to find the, uh, the third quartile, well, that's about, uh, about here on the uh, percentile axis. Go across to the ogive, and then go down, and that would be at about 72 inches, would be the 75th percentile, or the third quartile. If you want to find the, um, the first quartile, that would be about here, and you go across hit the ogive, go down, it would be about 67 inches. So again, these are not exact. The ogive and the histogram both obscure the actual data values to some extent. And in small data sets particularly, um, your, your percentiles and your data values are not going to perfectly match up the way they would perhaps in a very large data set where the ogive would tend to get a lot smoother and uh, um, the histogram would tend to get smoother as well. Things would tend to fill out. But uh, in these small data sets, that generally doesn't work. But that's the principle. If you want to find a data value that corresponds to a percentile, find the percentile on the vertical axis, go across to the ogive, turn right, and go directly down to the data axis or variable axis, and that will tell you what data value would correspond to that percentile. So that's what ogives are really good for. So they contain all the information that a histogram contains in a slightly different form. Plus, they give you this extra benefit of being able to find percentiles fairly easily, including the important percentiles of the first quartile, the median, and the third quartile, the 25th, 50th, and 75th percentiles. So uh, the ogive has a lot going for it. It's also easier to draw in general than a histogram is. So there's a lot to recommend it. It's uh, unfortunate, I think, that uh, OGIs are generally not as familiar with the general public as histograms might be. But uh, um, that is something that uh, people who understand OGIs really get the benefit from.